Hello and welcome to today's edition of Credit Matters TV. Today we're going to be talking about the Gulf and the corporate and infrastructure credit quality in that sector uh, related to a report we're just about to release. I'm uh, pleased to have today with me uh, Kareem Nassif, who's a senior analyst in our Dubai office. Kareem, um, can you tell us first of all, who do you think will be most impacted uh, by the commodity decline across the GCC in terms of the corporate and infrastructure landscape? Yeah, I mean, I think what we've seen in the last six to 12 months, we've seen some impact on the commodity uh, exposed entities, particularly the corporates. Uh, so we've seen uh, rating actions on Oxia, which is chemicals merchant entity. We've seen some impact also on entities like uh, Petrofac and Boretz, both uh, oil services companies. Um, however, it's important to stress here that the bulk of the credits mm. have been able to withstand mm. the commodity decline. Um, they are either well-structured entities mm. in infrastructure, such as RAS gas, or they are entities that can withstand uh, because they have a lot of cushion in their financial numbers. Mm. Um, so I think uh, the other element of the rating actions has been the uh, com co companies that are exposed to sovereigns yeah. that have experienced downturns. As you know, the GRE or government-related entity link to sovereigns mm. is ex important in our portfolio. So for example, we took actions on Oman mm. during the last six months and also on Bahrain. Mm -hmm. And Saudi was turned to negative outlook. Yeah. So those entities, Sabek, um, Oman Power, mm -hmm. and others were impacted, not because of underlying mm -hmm. quality, but because of the sovereign. I think on the underlying side, the companies have been doing well, yeah. and uh, they've been able to withstand uh, the commodity decline. And I think the other, th the other dimension that I'd like to mention is the issuance levels have actually gone down a lot right. in the last um, sort of August to August. Yeah by about 58% mm. uh, mm. across corporates, uh, sukuk mm. and bonds. And that is also, um, if you like, uh, a signal of the end of the boom mm. period in the credit cycle and perhaps us entering a sort of a tipping point uh, for the Gulf markets. Right. Well, you, you mentioned the sovereigns. I mean, what measure are the Middle East Gulf countries taken to counter the decline? And how is that sovereign pressure actually impacting the corporate and infrastructure world? You raise a very important question yeah. here because um, the uh, sovereign nations have, uh, in the Gulf have had to act. Mm. We're no longer in a situation now where you know, they can afford to, um, to watch as commodity f prices fluctuate. They've actually taken concrete action. Mm. Uh, and amongst the concrete action is because mm. of the fiscal deficits yeah. which we see across all of the Gulf nations mm. this year. Uh, we see aggregate growth drop by a half to about 2% across mm. the GCC. So the, the real reforms include, for example, subsidies, the removal of subsidies. Mm. So in the UAE now, fuel prices are, are based on a, a fuel benchmark, yeah. which is market-based. Yeah. Um, in Bahrain, they've been talking about meat subsidy reform. Yeah. In, um, uh, in Oman, they increased gas prices to introduce cost-reflective tariffs within their power sector. Uh, in Kuwait, they started to remove subsidies as well on um, commodities and, and fuel. So I think it's a very interesting time now. They're taking real actions. I think, however, that being said, I think the, the impact on the corporates is at the moment limited to, uh, for example, the downstream entities, mm. Alba and Bahrain, um, mm. uh, which is on the downstream uh, side, and mm. also Qatar Fertilizer, because they are seeing, obviously, the mm. impact of reduced subsidies, uh, but not really resulting in any major rating changes mm. at this point. Sure. Well, turning to sort of general uh, macroeconomic conditions, how well equipped do you think are the Gulf uh, corporates um, to withstand any further weakening. Indeed, how well equipped are they to weather um, an interest rate hike, which uh, may happen? Yes. I mean, I think it's important to stress here that I talked about um, rating actions on mm. Oman, Bahrain, and Saudi. The majority of our Gulf nations at the moment are mm. in stable outlook. Right. Uh, they're still highly rated entity uh, governments, so single A, double A, uh, with the exception of Bahrain, obviously, a triple B. But, um, Main, mainly uh, stable entities, with the exception of Saudi and Bahrain, that are on negative outlook. Mm. Um, so that helps, if you like, the environment. The other thing to keep in mind is we looked at a scenario where we hiked up um, the um, interest rates. Yeah. Uh, we looked at 150, 200 bips rise in interest rates, yeah. and we saw how does our corporate infrastructure sector withstand. And what we found was there is still 
quite a lot of financial cushion yeah. uh, in in the uh, in the in, in the mm. financial ratios to withstand that and not really change ratings, whether it's real estate companies, oil and gas companies, infrastructure companies. Um, however, what we do think is going to be interesting is the concomitant byproduct mm. of uh, a, r a rise in rates on some of these um, industry risk um, mm. uh, elements. So, for example, what would happen to the real estate market, to retail um, real estate companies, yeah. if uh, it, this interest rate right, were to lead to uh, sort of a weakening in GDP growth, mm. a weakening in consumption patterns, a weakening in demand. Uh, even utilities could s be impacted right. by a weakening in demand in the long term. So it's more the long term byproducts right. of an interest rate uh, uh, hike, which I think we, we would need to keep an eye on. Good. Thank you very much, Kareem. And that concludes uh, this issue of Credit Matters TV. Thanks for watching.